I'm Nick Snow, watching government for Oil and Gas Journal in Washington, D.C. It would have been an understatement on April 20th to say offshore oil and gas changed after the Macondo Deepwater well accident and crude oil spill five years earlier. The obvious follow-up question was whether it changed for the better. Complacency undeniably existed before the well blew out natural gas, and the Deepwater Horizon semi-submersible rig above it exploded, killing 11 people. The rig's underwater connection lines ruptured as it sank, triggering a leak that spewed nearly 5 million barrels of crude oil into the Gulf of Mexico that took 87 days to cap and contain. Wake-up calls don't get more dramatic. The U.S. offshore oil and gas industry and the Department of the Interior responded accordingly. DOI quickly suspended oil and gas activity in the Gulf as it broke the U.S. Minerals Management Service into separate components with specific purposes less likely to conflict. Today's U.S. Bureau of Ocean Energy Management and Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement operate separately but occasionally coordinate. BOEM's reforms aim to ensure that environmental safeguards are strong and based on the best available science before it approves exploration and development plans. It requires more specific worst-case discharge calculations and more accurate air quality modeling. Liability limits jumped from $75 million before Macondo to $134 million presently, with the process for further increases to keep pace with inflation. Reforms at Bessie aim to reduce risk with better well design and casing requirements, a bigger inspection and engineering workforce, and safety and environmental management system requirements to let workers participate in safety management decisions. Its inspectors now must be on site to observe blowout preventer testing before drilling begins. Operators also must demonstrate they have access to all necessary subsea well control and containment equipment, including a capping stack. Bessie also plans to propose a rule to increase equipment reliability based upon industry's enhanced BOP standards and comprehensively address multiple offshore well control systems and processes. The Industry Center for Offshore Safety reported on April 8th that 2013 data from its members show operations are safer than ever. Safe mechanical lifting, process safety, and adherence to operating procedures and safe work practices still need work, it indicated. The report showed that COS members' operations in 2013 suffered no fatalities and did not lose control of any well over 42 million work hours, American Petroleum Institute President Jack N. Girard told reporters a day later. That is a marker we must build and improve upon every single day, he maintained. The millions of men and women who work in our industry and all Americans whose lives are powered by oil and gas deserve no less. That's Watching Government for this week. In Washington, I'm Nick Snow for Oil and Gas Journal.